but that is some pretty looking corn. I'm about to take this inside so my helpers can start cutting this off the cob. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having a wonderful day. It is Friday, June 2nd here in South Georgia, and today is corn day. Our sweet corn behind me here is ready, so we're gonna be harvesting a majority of this, getting it shucked, getting it silked, getting it cut off the cob, getting it in the freezer. We're gonna assess this double row experiment we did here, tell you whether we liked it or not, whether we do it again, Tell you how we know when corn is ready tell you what we did to minimize the worm damage and then show you the whole process of getting this stuff in the freezer so first let's kind of revisit this double row planting situation that we tried out this year so instead of planting single rows of corn 30 to 36 inches apart we planted double rows 40 inches apart and so we were able to plant about a thousand seeds in here with double rows we ended up with 18 rows as opposed to around i don't know 12 or 14 rows if we would have done it traditionally with single rows now when we decided to try this double row corn planting my only two real concerns were pollination and being able to give this corn enough water we were able to easily solve the water issue by using drip tape on the double rows we use a drip tape with a six inch emitter spacing which puts out twice as much water basically as the 12 inch emitter spacing drip tape that we normally use as far as pollination goes i was a little bit worried about there being too much foliage in here here and the pollen not being able to fall from the top of the corn plant down to the ears and pollinate those silks but as I'll show you in a minute looks like we didn't have any pollination issues at all now had we planted these double rows even closer maybe 30 to 36 inches apart as opposed to 40 inches apart we might have had some pollination issues but that's why I went with a little wider spacing with these double rows here that way our pollen could fall down and pollinate those ears now in addition to the obvious yield gain that we'll get here by planting double rows versus single rows one of the main reasons i wanted to try double row planting has to do with getting my drip tape up after the corn is done in the past we would bury the drip tape plant the corn seeds right on top of the drip tape that works great but it can be quite a booger to pull that drip tape up after the corn is done and you end up breaking or tearing a lot of it trying to rip it up this double row technique here we've got our corn plants kind of to the side of the drip tape which sits in the middle of each double row and i think it's going to be so much easier to get our tape up we can save that tape we can reuse that tape so yes yield is a big one but also getting the tape up is going to be another big advantage as well so i won't know this for sure until we harvest all this corn and start trying to pull up this tape but i think it's sitting in the center of the double row just like that's going to make it really easy to just yank out of there fold it up and reuse it another time so will we do this double row corn planting again most certainly i don't think i'll ever plant corn in single rows again now i probably wouldn't recommend trying this if you're not growing on drip tape or if you don't have some really good irrigation there's a lot of corn plants in this little 30 by 35 plot corn plants are really thirsty so you got to be able to give them the water they need so the plants don't get stressed so i don't know that i would recommend trying it if you're not growing on drip tape or if you're not going to get plenty of rain to keep the plants happy so now let's talk about how we know when the sweet corn is ready to harvest and kind of our window for getting it all harvested so i just harvested these two ears right behind me there and when you hear people talk about when corn is ready to harvest you'll often hear them reference the silks here when these silks get nice and brown that's when it's ready to harvest and that is a really good sign but sometimes it may take even a few more days after these silks get nice and brown you got to wait until these kernels plump up too so we'll use these two ears right here for comparison you can see the silks on this one are pretty brown and crispy and i can kind of feel this is a nice full ear we'll pull back the shuck in a minute take a look at it we've got this one here which is a little bit of a smaller ear and we can see the silks right there haven't completely all turned brown yet and this one doesn't feel like it's quite plumped up enough yet so this one is probably at peak maturity 
this one probably could have stood to stay on the stalk a few more days so let's open this one up right here and see what we got nice pretty ear of corn there so the first thing we want to make sure we've got is really good pollination which we do we've got kernels all the way to the tip of the ear which tells us that those pollen grains on top of the corn plant were indeed able to fall down onto those silks each one of those silks represents a kernel on this corn if all those silks get pollinated we get a nice full ear like this now about a week ago, all the silks on these ears were starting to turn brown. They hadn't gotten really crispy yet, but they were starting to turn brown. And went ahead and started pulling a few ears just to kind of check them every other day or so. And they look good, but they hadn't quite plumped up yet. Now this one has plumped up. This is what we want to see, some nice plump kernels there. So even after the silks turn brown, you really need to kind of keep the water to the corn, make sure got plenty of water or moisture in the soil there and that will help them kernels plump up nicely and give you a nice good crunch when you go to eat this stuff mm, that's good stuff now for these super sweet varieties like this Eden sweet corn here our harvest window is around 10 days or so we don't have to be in a huge hurry to get it out of here once the silks turn brown get nice and crispy and the kernels plump up now if you're growing more of a standard variety like silver queen your window is a lot smaller than it is with this corn so with silver queen you got to make sure you get it just the right time if you don't it can get starchy really quick on you and you also kind of have to process it all in one day whatever you pull off those plants you got to go ahead and shuck it and cut it and get it in the freezer otherwise it can get starchy on you these super sweets which have a higher sugar content have a little more shelf life off the plant there and they won't get starchy near as fast and that's the primary reason why i like growing these super sweet varieties as opposed to the older standard varieties it's not necessarily the taste i do like the sweetness of these if you put a bowl of silver queen sweet corn in front of me i'm going to tear it up no doubt about that but with these i get a longer harvest window i could have harvested and processed this corn earlier this week but i had a lot of stuff going on i wasn't able to get to it until later this week had i been growing silver queen my corn might have got starchy or i would have had to kind of put some things on the back burner so if you've got kind of a busy schedule super sweets are the way to go that way you don't have to harvest it in the narrow little window there now before I go get Abram and we start harvesting and processing some of this corn, let's talk about corn earworms a little bit. Now obviously this ear right here is clean as a whistle, no worm damage whatsoever. But I have pulled a few ears so far that had a little bit of worm damage on the tip there. So we use an organic product called Spinosad to minimize the damage from corn earworms. We really try to start spraying it once we see some silks developing on those corn plants there but when i started getting silks we were getting a lot of rain we were getting rain seemed like every afternoon and i didn't want to spray the spinosad have it be washed off by rain have to come in and spray it again spray it several times so i didn't bother spraying it while we were getting rain every day then we got a little break about a week or so ago where we didn't have any rain for three or four days i came in here and just sprayed it once that's all it's been sprayed and did it help seems to have helped now we probably already had some worms by the time i sprayed it but i think i was able to kind of minimize the damage by giving it one application of spinosad so now that I've explained how we got to this point here, I'm going to go grab Abram and we're going to start harvesting a majority of this corn, filling up the back of our buggy. Looking at it just kind of from the outside without getting in the middle of those rows, it looks like we've got some pretty consistent maturity. So we're going to kind of pick it clean. There may be a few ears we leave in there, a few kind of late maturing ears, but got good consistent maturity so far. Probably going to leave a row on the end there. We can do a boil this weekend, give a few ears away, but the majority of it is going to get processed and put in the freezer today. All right, Bubby, you ready to get some corn? Yep. All right, get those right there. They're turned brown. Oh. Yep, those are nice. Let's go ahead and fill up the back of the buggy, and then we'll go shuck all that, and we'll pick some more. All right, so that took about 20 minutes or so. Got the back of the buggy somewhat full. That right there is six of these double rows still have 
three more to go although we may leave one for just some corn on the cob most of these stalks are giving us one good ear and then kind of a runt ear down there sometimes that runt ear is worth getting sometimes it ain't so i'm just kind of feeling of them as i go if they feel nice and full i'll get them if not we'll just leave them and see what happens and as i told you when we took a chance and planted this sweet corn and say early to mid march sure is a lot nicer out here right now in early june than it would be in say early to mid july so that's why it's worth a little gamble go ahead and get your sweet corn in that way you can pick it and process it on a day where you got a nice breeze and it's only supposed to get in the low 80s as opposed to being in the 90s and being unbearable all right so we got some little station set up in the barn here got a trash can for our shucks bubby's doing a little corn dance we got this container here we'll put our good ears in got us a fan over here keep the flies off of us now it's time to get to shucking all right so we got us a nice container full there trying to keep the flies off this stuff got some worms in there a few at the tips that's why you see some of those cut off there but that is some pretty looking corn about to take this inside so my helpers can start cutting this off the cop all right several hours later and I have shucked and pulled the silks off that whole buggy full of corn there. And I think that's all I'm going to do for today. There's still three double rows out there. May get those in the next couple days. Maybe get that on Sunday. Our babysitter's mama has been inside cutting it off the cob and creaming it just as fast as I've been shucking it here. So uh, let's go inside and see what we got all right so inside here like i told you earlier our babysitter's mama cut most of this off the cob but she had to run earlier so i'm just finishing up the last few ears several different tools out there you can use to do this i like this little pamper ship rig right here it's got a cutter and then a scraper on it so the way we do this is basically use this end to kind of cut the kernels off the cob And then we take this little plastic in right here and just kind of scrape the juices out. Everybody likes their sweet corn a little different. Some people out there is really soupy and they just want to cream the whole thing. I like to have a little more texture to mine. That's why we cut the kernels off, then kind of smash the juices out. So I'll give you a little closer look here as to how this is done. We can go as deep as we want with this little cutter here. We can just kind of barely cut the top or we can go pretty deep and get some nice large kernels. I don't do every ear exactly the same, so I got it cut off and then just take this piece right here, just kind of scrape down there, get all those good juices out of there. And so after we've cut it all off and got the juices off the cobs, this is what we're left with here, two big old bowls of pretty sweet corn. And then to cook it before we freeze it, we just use one of these Pyrex containers here, put it in the microwave for 10 minutes, stop it halfway and stir it. And then once that cools down just a hair, then we start using our old food saver here and putting it in the bags. And it looks like Miss Brooklyn has already done about 12 to 14 bags there and still a lot of corn to go. So we're really going to be able to fill the freezer with our harvest this year. Now we've still got a ways to go inside there, but it looks like we're going to end up getting around 50 or more bags just from those six 30 foot double rows of sweet corn which is a plenty for us and to give some away to miss lou beth for helping us earlier so i don't know if i'm going to put up those other three double rows i'll probably just give that corn away probably give some to brooklyn's grandma she was wanting to put up some just see who i can get to take some of it and you don't necessarily need a food saver vacuum sealer to put up your own sweet corn. You can do it in Ziploc bags just fine. But we've had that food saver since we got married. So over 10 years, it's more than paid for itself. Those are a really good investment if you're going to do a lot of gardening and a lot of freezing of the stuff that you grow. So just to recap, I couldn't be happier with how that double row corn experiment turned out. And I would highly recommend giving that a try if you've got adequate irrigation it's a great way to grow more corn in a given space we grew a ton of corn in that little 30 by 35 plot i'd also highly recommend this eden variety here if you like white sweet corn 
give this variety a try it performed really well for us yielded really well and we're going to get a lot of corn in the freezer as a result so i hope you enjoyed the video today be sure to check out our affiliate links in the description below and i'll also put a link to that corn cutter we used and if you want to learn more or see more about that double row planting technique we use check out this video right here this is the video we did 60 or 70 days or so ago when we planted that sweet corn and talk about that technique and the variety that we grew so check that out we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm